I'm Marcy. Thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. Um, Do our best today. So we're only okay. I'm gonna when I when I speak, I'm gonna take my um, mask off. And where do you want me to get up? And probably right around here would be okay. Okay. So the rabbi will be here. Okay. And Amy, where are you? Where are you going to? I don't I'm, I may get closer to you. This is not No, no, no. If you, as long as you have your mask on, yeah. then tell me where you're going to sit. So oh. that I can. Like right here? Well, why don't you sit in one either end? So that way it's more. Warm. It's not like it's I understand. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, especially on this side of the cemetery. 
Maybe we'll start it. Don't want to start early if there's not many people coming out soon. Yeah. 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 Sure. You have news, Kurt? You have news? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I thought it was 30 seconds. Okay, we'll wait. Everybody may be seen. In the presence of death, let us not fear. For we share it with all who have ever been, and all who will ever be. For it is only the dust which returns to the dust as it was. But the spirit returns to God who gave it, and in God's hand is the care of every soul. The world we inhabit is a corridor to the world beyond. Let us prepare ourselves that corridor to enter God's presence. For God is our employer, who knows our labor as well as our song. Faithful is God's gift us the reward of our redeemers. We are redeemed from destruction and led in the way of everlasting life. His will is on me. Adonai, Rawi, Noexo. Benotese yardin seni, amein ruko imasale. Narshi shovez yam chemi, ramazay tzedek, ramaz shemam. Ela, the gates of Amen. No, Irara, Yatai Badi, Shifra, Shanta, Emaya Hadam, Tarok, the Panai Shokan, Mengu, the Shanta, the Shaman Roshi, Kosi Rabaya, Abtov the Khaver, 
יד דפוי, כל ימי חיי, ושם בבית ארנאי, מאורי ימים. הפעם הזאת, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk, and green fields let me lie. By quiet things he leads me, and restores my soul. Guides me in paths of truth for such as this. So I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I turn my heart to you as a son, your rod is dead. They come to me, and spread a table before me in front of my enemy. He sues my head. My cup runs over, and surely goodness and mercy seek me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Also, he said, like David, like this, what I would say is, my son. was born in Newark, New Jersey. He eventually moved to New York and Boston, one of his favorite places. Paul lived in Boston for almost 30 years. Paul was a huge sports fan, mainly football, but loved soccer because of his best friend, Frank. If you're wondering if his heart was with the Giants or the Jets, you would be wrong. His team was the New England Patriots. He was a huge Tom Brady fan. If you know Paul, he was not a fair-weathered friend. He was loyal and loving to the end. So when his beloved Tom Brady moved to Tampa Bay, Paul rooted him on and thought he was a genius for the move and had the utmost respect for him. Well, Paul, apparently you knew who to bet on because your Tom is going to the Super Bowl this weekend. Paul had a full life. He was a businessman that ran a successful shoe business and traveled back and forth to Tokyo, make, making hundreds of friends across not only the country, but the world. He loved life, a good golf game, smoking a cigar, and of course, having a great glass of wine or vodka. Paul loved Bob Dylan and thought of his music as poetry, and nothing could stop him from listening to some good reggae music. Paul's life really changed when he met the woman of his dreams, Amy. Paul was so smitten with her that he wanted to be with her every moment after they went out on their first date. I soon met Paul after they met, and he told me how in love he was with my aunt. You had to have blinders on not to see how close and serious they had become in such a short period of time, and how much he was already taking care of her. She was his girl and always will be. They traveled the world together going on exotic trips. Just the two of them were his friends. He loved learning new cultures. He was an adventurer and always wanted to learn new things. Several years ago, my parents, myself, Nancy and Marty Johnson, Michelle and Bob Mates, and Carol and Udo Clever went to Italy for a special trip and shared a beautiful home in Lake Como. Paul took us to some amazing restaurants where the food was beyond incredible, obviously authentic, and the fun we all had together will never be forgotten. The time, effort, and thoughtfulness that he put into planning this trip was above and beyond. I know that the rest of our group will never forget all the memories and bonding that we all shared. Paul came into our family's life a bit later on, but was loved and cared for as if he was there from the very start. He was an uncle, he was a brother-in-law, and had grandnephews and nieces. I know I can speak for my family and say that we were lucky to have known and loved him and to have him as our family. More than anything, though, we appreciated the love he had for our Amy. 
I would be remiss if I did not mention two incredibly special people in Paul's life. Toby Richmond, Paul's sister. Toby, you were Paul's older sister that he spoke of so fondly. He loved you more than you know. And I know you have said there was nothing that he would not have done for you. And that really is the truth. And of course, Frank Scarcella, Paul's best friend, who was like his brother. And not to mention Frank's beautiful children and grandchildren. He loved you very much, Elisa, Anthony, and Dino, and, and of course, all your spouses and children. He truly, truly did. Unfortunately, Frank passed a number of years ago, which broke Paul's heart. I'd like to think that Paul and Frank are playing the greatest round of golf with those cigars in hand and that vodka drink in the golf cart laughing like hell. Lastly, Amy, as I said, you were his girl. Nobody could argue that Paul was tough, but Paul had the most tender and loving side as well. He loved you with all his being and wanted only the best for you. He pampered you, took care of things, and all he wanted was for you to be happy. In this very hard time, I want you to remember and reflect on that last statement. All he wanted was for you to be happy. That gave him joy. You had a beautiful marriage of 18 years. I know you might not think it's a long time, but you two packed so much into 18 years that most people don't get in a lifetime. Be grateful you had him, his love, and the things you both taught each other. Most of all, know he was with you, that he is with you in your heart, and he always, always will be. Your family and friends will always be here to love and support you. I will always be here whenever you need me, always, without fail, without question. May you gain strength every day and that the pain eases every day. Again, we will all be there for you. I love you very much. Thank you. When I was talking with family members, I mentioned that in my 40 years as a rabbi, there's been a sea change in the way that we've been doing funerals. For 30 of those years, at almost every funeral, I, the rabbi, whether I knew the deceased or not, would conduct the service, of course, but also give the eulogy. More often than not, not knowing the deceased, the way that it would handle it is speaking with the family, and learning about the individual and taking what they told me and relating it back and embellishing it with words of wisdom, excerpts from the Jewish tradition, poetry, and we would have a eulogy. And people would feel comforted. In the past 10 years or so, in almost all cases, there has been a sea change. Friends and family want to speak. They say, Rabbi, we should speak beautifully. But you didn't know my husband, you didn't know my dad, you didn't know my mom. We'll speak. And I want you to know that I always think that that is so much better. Marcy, you spoke beautifully. Really. And I think it's so much better that way. And the truth is, of course, that I did not know Paul. And I want to tell you that in a very real sense, I'm very sorry I didn't know him. Because in hearing about him, I'm sure we would have gotten along. I have a picture of this man who's enjoying a good cigar and a round of golf, some vodka, or some wine. A man who had immense talents and spoke five different languages. Imagine that. In Europe, that's not such a big deal. In Europe, everybody speaks languages. It's not necessarily an indication of high education there or particularly high intelligence. In America, that's a very rare thing. And that speaks to something deeper as well. Clearly, his ability to relate to people to want to communicate. And here is a man who was a 
businessman? What what does the businessman do? He wants to make a profit. But here was a man who was not been blinded by that legitimate worthy goal that he wanted to relate to people, was able to identify with his workers. He was not the sort of person who would exploit people, who would use people, but related to them. He was a person who could have strong opinions, I understand, but knew how to express his strong opinions, doing it appropriately, doing it softly. And I think, you know, in this day and age when we talk about toxic masculinity, the idea, the mantra for us men is we should strive to have a hard body, yes, but a soft body. He was a man who achieved that in so many ways. It could be hard, but he knew him how to do so. That's, that's really an idea. I often remark, and I find it very interesting, that people in general, but I think Jews in particular, seem to have to justify their grief in terms of values. I'd say my father was generous, my mother was kindly, my husband was lovely, loving. And I never heard anybody get up and say, my Uncle Max cheated at cards, but he loved him anyway. Nobody ever says that. It's always got to be justified in terms of values. You know, I think there's something that you, you know, something that is characteristic to you, but also of Paul, is the idea of unconditional. Value, there are plenty of them. Memory is a lot of good memory. But love is a value in and of itself. And here was a man who was loved. He was loved because he loved others. And so, although we don't need to justify the, to justify love in terms of values, here was a man who bequeathed a treasury of values and plenty. And although you had a marriage of only 18 years, not really a long time, Although well, Paul died at age 77, which by today's standards is not so terribly old. Nevertheless, it's a matter of quality and not quantity. That's something to be grateful for. But it's memorable. Let us find solace and happy moments. And the story of the two of any of his ones. May soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Ha-ta-ti-bor-le-olam-ad-anah. <laughs> You will Lord are the endless power that renews life beyond death through the greatness of faith. You care for the living with love. You renew life beyond death with unending mercy. You support the falling and heal the sick. You free prisoners and keep faith with those who speak in the Bible. Who can perform such mighty deeds? And who can compare with you? A king who brings death and life and renews salvation. You are faithful to renew life beyond death. Rohai Nishama, Shnatata Bo Teho Rahi, Ata Rahi, Ata Rizai, Vata Vata Bo Vata Nishama, Yona Vata Nadla, Vata Lafaye Yona Baru Hatarama. Lord, the soul that you have given him is pure, for you created it. You formed it, and you breathed it into him. You care for it forever, and it's taken it for life everlasting. Bless you, Lord, who brings the dead to life everlasting. May he come to his resting place. You rise to the Lord. To your hand we commend the spirit and with the spirit of body also. The Lord is with us. Let
אין בו דרחם. שוכחים פעם לומדים, אבל נעשה מנוחה נכון לעשות את השני. כלומר, לא תדעו שהיא מתאורת. זו ערכים עצובים, עת נשמת פסח די בוחן אברהם. שלח לו למה בגן עדן חיים ונכנסו. פנה בא לרחמים הסטריהו. תוסף הקונפטו לעולמים ובצור בצור החיים את נשמתו. אדוני ונכנסו. ינוע, ושלום, עם אשכבו ונאמר אמן. O God, exalted and full of compassion, and grant perfect peace in your shelter presence, among the holy and true, to the soul of Pesach Leibel Ben Abraham, O Christian, who God is in Master of mercy, we beseech you to remember all of the worthy and righteous deeds you perform in the land of the living. May a soul be bound up in the path of eternal life. The Lord is perfect. Together we magnify and sanctify the name of God in the words of the morning's covenant. We say, Yitzchadal, Yitzchadal, Shemei Rabbah, Yoma, Yibra, Yiruzei, Yomli, Ma'akutei B'chayichon, Yomichon, Chayei D'chol Beit Yisrael, Ma'agala, Rizman, Kari, Yiruan. Yehoshmei <laughs> At this time, I invite everyone to come forward and to take part in the mitzvah, the kudat ha'ed, hearing the head, by placing earth on the part of the consumer translation of doing this coded pandemic The Lord is given, the Lord takes away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. We would store the Surah Fahim and Yishmat's heart. We'll still be bound up in the bond of eternal life and let us say, Amen. Those who mourn, we extend the traditional words of comfort. Amakom Yidrachem Etchem Tokhsha of Aletzion Yerushalayim. May the all-merciful comfort you together with the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. And let us say, Amen.
this time I would ask for everybody except Amy to come here onto the access road and form two rows facing one. Extending the traditional words of comfort, we say, Amakom binachem, or tachitokha, amaletsuin yishmah. May the all merciful comfort you together with the mourners who die in Jerusalem. Let us say, Amen. All right. This concludes the funeral service. Thank you, Rabbi.